welcome back to some more of my D&D creator sim where I take my D&D characters that I have created, come up with stories with, and even drawn and try to create them in sims. Like imagine them in the sims world. So today we have my D&D character named Aurelia. So she is a human, but she is specifically a human Kalistar. I'm probably not saying that right. But basically it is people that have been not possessed because they still have like their own um, personality and stuff like that, but they have a spirit with them, a ghost sort of inside them as simple terms. Um, so she ends up having slightly more abilities and stuff like that because of the fact that she has this ghost along with her or Kalistars in general. Her Kalistar is actually like really close to her and I'll get into that story a little bit later. You should probably already see a drawing of her. So you should be seeing my drawing of her and how I drew her out. I think in the end she gets pretty close to the drawing for the most part. Obviously in Sims I'm pretty limited but she is one of the characters that is, well she is human therefore it is going to be a little bit easier to make her compared to like a dragonborn or something like that in Sims. So yeah. She is a Phantom Rogue, so in D&D terms, that is her subclass and class, and so she basically, her story is she lived in like this, not necessarily small town, but it wasn't really a big town, and she was friends with one of the more richer families in town who had like these nice artifacts and stuff in their house, and their house was actually broken into, the family was murdered, and the artifacts stolen. So eventually one day she goes, like she had a hard time ever going to that house because that was like her best friend. They were so close and she has a hard time ever deciding to even go in the house and technically everyone like, because they were a very well-loved family in the community. So a lot of people almost had similar feelings even if they wasn't as close to them as like some of their friends and family were. But the house, for the most part, was untouched by anyone in the neighborhood and stuff like that. The culprits were never found. They were The artifacts were never found that were stolen. And eventually one day Aurelia decided to go and go to the old house of her friend. And there she actually becomes the Kalistar, which is the ghost that ends up staying with her and not... not Again, I don't really know how to term it. There's, like, it's a while since I read, like, the description of Kalashar, so it's, there's probably a word in the description of them that would help me right now, but yeah, it's not really possessed, but it's something along those terms. You know, they have a ghost with them at all times now. Is actually her best friend. <laughs> so, she is reunited with her best friend, but her best friend is now a ghost, and is the reason why she's able to be have a little bit more abilities than she usually would have on her own even though she was she was a decently uh tough girl to begin with but you know now she's got this a little extra abilities going on with her so basically her main goal to eventually go out and travel now that she's reunited with her best friend even though her best friend's a ghost she is re because her best friend is now a ghost she is technically constantly reminded that her friend is dead and that her friend's family is dead. <laughs> so, you know, she actually gets more of a motivation to actually try to go out and find the culprits of who ransacked their house and who had killed them and stuff like that. And she's wanting to basically avenge their death and return their artifacts because technically those were... Like, they were theirs, but they were part of the community, so she feels like they need to go back to their town. So, that is sort of her goal. But she is, she's always sort of been a little bit of the creepy, the creepy girl. Um, I imagine her friend was a little less of creepy, but, like, they were, like, they were friends that they had some similarities, but they almost had more opposites, and that some people would somewhat question why they were still friends, or why they were friends in the first place. But it works for them, and it works great for them, because... That's just how it ended up being. But yeah, she really was always sort of the creepy girl and a little bit strange. Like, she already sort of had a fascination with going out and going to, like, graveyards and abandoned stuff. 
The only difference in with the house that was her friend's was because of what happened there, and it took her a while to, before she felt comfortable going there. But eventually, eventually she got to a point where she was comfortable, so she went and seen how things happened and what it looked like and everything. Obviously, her the friend and stuff, like, the bodies were not there anymore, but everything else was left the way it was. So she was able to sort of see the aftermath of all that had went down. I think when it comes to a lot of my D&D characters, there's always a little little bit of part of me, even if it's like a part that people don't well know and it's more of like something that I bottle up or something. Like this is getting a little deep and personal, but um, I feel like there's always a little bit of me in each of these characters, which I feel like a lot of people do that. Like some of them may not be very obvious, some of them may, may think it's one thing and it's not, um, but... With Aurelia, I would say that she's definitely got my fascination with ghost sort of situation. She's probably one of the ones that's got a little bit more of me in it than some of the others. Some of them, it's very, something very, very tiny, very, very minute. And then some of them, it's like screaming you in the face. But, but so yeah, she, she probably is one of them that's got a little bit more of my personality. I also ended up giving her dark brown hair, which is my hair color. I actually give her, like, these light purple streaks, because a lot of Kalistars that I've seen, like, illustrations of, they have, like, white eyes and white hair, which I sort of, I do like, but at the same time, I decided to put my own twist on it. It was, like, once she got possessed, her eyes changed a little bit different of a color, but it also got lightened, and then she got these lighter streaks of, like, a, a palish purple in her hair, so that is, like, my interpretation of the Kalistar, like, they still keep the original potential eye color or hair color, but it just gets lighter or gets streaks in it. Like, it either a lighter brown or gets streaks. Something along those lines. So that's how I sort of wanted her. And I did have a little bit more fun with her when it came to, like, the piercings and stuff. Just because it fit with her personality. Now, I don't know, realistically, like, you know, D&D is set back in olden times but you know there was things in like or at least it has that more medieval type feel to it or whatever now that i do know that technically piercings have been around for a really long time just maybe not in the same sense as the piercings that i put on her in um in sims here but uh yeah anyway i just thought you know i'm making sim versions of them i'm trying to make them look as close as possible to the drawing, but at the same time make it almost like sort of a modern version of them, a Sims fitting, ver Sims 4 fitting version of them. So I decided to give her piercings, more, more modern piercings, I guess you can call them. But I also don't know exactly how piercings are done in d and I'm sure like ear piercings and stuff are very common because those are like the most common piercings anyway, but... Uh, depending on your DM would probably depend on how some of that stuff goes down because there's also things that people make like using magic that basically work like cell phones or similar to cell phones in a way. So there's ways to bring in modern elements but still make it make sense because magic is a thing. <laughs> it's all magic. Now as far as sim version her, like I've been giving them all aspirations and like traits and stuff that try to mesh with their D, D selves and i gave her the archaeology scholar as an aspiration again i'm doing like a little mini series uh if you haven't either watched some of these creative sims or you haven't watched the build series that i'm doing of like this big giant mansion i eventually will be doing a mini series after the fact after this series wraps up and that build series wraps up where i put all these characters into the house together and we'll be using dice to like decide which like every morning to decide which rooms they have access to if they're stuck in their bedrooms like a bunch of stuff like that going on with them but i basically am wanting tim to try to have as much as their own personality because i am not going to be trying to control them obviously i'm going to have mods in so like mcc will be active like slice of life will be in there i have a chemistry system i have what else do I have? I feel like I have something else that does something. I also am hoping that the one mod that allows me to pick five traits is working and updated at the time. I think it's been getting updated. I just hope that when I do go to start this series that it is updated because I would like to give them five traits. I did give them the three traits that I wanted them most to have just in case it isn't working 
I also give them likes and dislikes that make sense to them just because I want them to be affected as much as possible like the game and the mods affecting them as much as possible and it worked because I'm not going to control them except for like certain things that just have to be done like there's technically going to be a cat in the house so I definitely want to make sure that the cat has food so if my sims are not autonomously filling the bowls up I'm going to make sure that someone is filling the bowls up for the cat <laughs> so situations like that if I need to get them out of a room because they're not supposed to be in that room I will control them and stuff like that and eventually, I think, like, on a Saturday, I'm going to let them go out of the house as long as they never rolled a nat 1. If they rolled a nat 1, guess what? You gotta stay home on Saturday. But, yeah. So, hopefully all that, you know, works out. But her traits for Sims are going to be loner, gloomy, and adventurous are going to be the main ones. So she will have those ones no matter what. But she will also have art lover and creative if I can get the other thing working. So, yeah, as long as all that, and her likes and dislikes were already chose. I'm not going to go in a long list of those. I haven't been for any of them. But you should start being, seeing the screenshots by now, and you might notice I do have a little ghost following her around. It, I did make a sim version of her friend. I technically never drew her friend out, so this was just me, like, coming up with a character. <laughs> coming up with this character in Sims, actually, because I never really drew out her friend completely. Like, I had ideas of what her friend looked like, but I never drew them out and, like, for surely figured them out on how I wanted them to be. But yeah, so she does have her ghost friend with her. I, I felt like she needed to be included. I felt like it she was a pretty big part of, like, who she is, because technically she is a Kalistar now. Yeah, I, I decided to have the ghost. Obviously, she's not, like, the main person here. I also am going to be taking the urn with her into the mansion. Like, I'm going to put it in her inventory so that her friend's urn is with her. And that might be one of the manual things that I do to make sure to keep her friend attached to the, the world so that her friend every once in a while comes out. So, yeah. There will be a little ghost in the house as well. You know, who knows what the ghost is going to do, but we'll deal with that when that comes. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you like Aurelia. She is, like, personality-wise and stuff like that, she definitely is one of my favorites. Like, just imagine, like, me imagining how she is and stuff like that, I definitely know that I would definitely vibe with her. <laughs> so she is one of my favorites that way. And I think her sim turned out to be really pretty and actually pretty close to my drawing. Yeah, it's not exact. Again, it's sims. Like, I'm limited even with mod CC and stuff in. I'm going to be limited, but trying my best here. And I think she's one of the ones that closer to her drawn version. I hope you like how she turned out. If so, let me know down in the comments below what is your favorite part about her. I hope you're looking forward to future characters as well and also looking forward to the mini series. There is a link down in the description below to the playlist for the mansion that I'm building for the mini series as well as the characters creation playlist. So if there's a character you think you've missed then you could go back and click on that playlist and see which ones you potentially haven't seen yet. I forget what number this is. If I was thought ahead I would count how many characters we are in right now but I uh I forgot to count. It also might would help if I actually put those in the title just so like if I say that this is like the 13th one you're like oh I don't remember watching 13 and <laughs> you could go back and figure out which one it was. Might do that. Might do that. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, hit the like button, subscribe. You know that lovely YouTube getting us. I don't know if I said that already, so I'm just going to cover my bases there. But anyway, for now, I will be leaving. So bye-bye. Hopefully, I'll see you in the next one.